Good morning, guys, and welcome back to Armored Warfare. It's Yager 262, and today I will be doing my review on the Leclerc prototype, the new Tier 7 MBT. That is an addition to the French tank line, unlike the Al Hussein. So, first things first, because yesterday's video ran a little bit longer than I wanted it to, I decided to break this apart like I do with World of Tanks, and then you guys can let me know in the comment section below or by just giving it some likes or however you want just if you prefer this style or if you like it all together so world of tanks like with the um captured king tiger and the sirocco tank destroyer i did initial reviews and then did separate videos for the gameplay and i kind of walked through the gameplay separately and we're going to do that here just to give you a quick rundown a very quick video and also to that way i can actually upload it in the morning because yesterday's video I made in the afternoon and for whatever reason on my new computer it takes a very long time to upload and so it didn't get online until like 8 o'clock at night so to avoid that problem and to keep things short and quick I'm going to split it up into two parts so this will just be the initial stats and some history on the Leclerc prototype so first things first diving into the review history of this vehicle uh, in Armored Warfare, they list this development period as 1978 to 1986, stating that it was like a joint German-French project and all this other stuff. And six prototypes were made in 1986, and then after that, the actual Leclerc program started, and so only six of these particular vehicles are in existence. Essentially, that's true, however... The Leclerc prototypes were around in 86. The tank that preceded this one that actually looked or would have been the basis for this vehicle is the EPC, which was started in 1982 after the French rejected the German designs from the 70s and rejected the American and Israeli designs. So there was a small vehicle in between the German and French phase, the Campagne Fraga 3, which was the German name for it, uh, and the French is AMX 40 and then the Leclerc obviously that's not really that important but this vehicle was the first completely indigenous French vehicle to be produced since the AMX 30 so it's kind of special now the reason that it's designed is so important as you can probably see here and I'll show you right now I'll do it a little bit differently show you the armor profile now is that these vehicles were built for speed and so one the biggest weak spot is going to be this lower plate and just like the al Hussein yesterday none of the armor screens or steel armor actually protects this no armor upgrade and no amount of hull going hull down or angling is going to fix that problem nor is it going to fix this one that's because the leclerc program was started to make very lightweight vehicles that could carry heavy hitting guns there we go. There we go. Nope. There we go. Who forgot how to do that? They could carry a heavy hitting 120 millimeter gun. And what I was looking at here is I forgot what ammo types it gets, but I think stock it gets Sabo and AG. This Leclerc is stock, so when I go into the stats, I made all of these tanks stock as well. So you can get a good idea. But the Leclerc was made for speed, just like the Type 96H Chinese main battle tank line. It was built on the basis that it is better to have a hard-hitting gun in a lightly armored vehicle that can move around the battlefield quickly and avoid shells than a vehicle that is really heavy and built just for crew protection like a Merkava or a Challenger. And that is, as you just saw, captured in the vehicle here. And it's the only tank I've ever played in Armored Warfare that makes me feel like I'm in World of Tanks. What I mean by that is... Its playstyle is so weird that it's not the normal slow calculated point and shoot. It takes it's so got a quick aim time, but it's very hard to get your gun to position while you're moving. It's just it's a very strange combination of things. It feels like a medium tank from all the tanks more than a main battle tank here. And so I'm gonna pull up some stats now and just show you what I mean. 
in that regard going straight to mobility it is the fastest tank here besides of course the TADU and that is the premium TADU so all of its stats are going to be a little bit buffed compared to the rest because they're all stock but I just kept it here for that exact comparison because the Leclerc in terms of mobility uh, how quickly it can accelerate well actually it loses to the Titan 96 in that category but it's going to be only second to this premium vehicle. So 72 kilometers an hour top speed, 4.1 seconds to reach 32 kilometers an hour. It only weighs 52,700 kilograms, which is incredibly light. Now, it's not as light as the Type 96 or the T-80U, but in terms of European main battle tanks, that's what I think makes this one so unique is because they're more in the vein of the Leopard, the M1, or the Challenger one. And I didn't put the Leopard on here for some reason, I just realized that. It's my mistake, but oh well. So to have a tank that's that light is incredible. Its whole traverse speed is 31.98 degrees, which is fairly decent. It's almost the same as the Abrams. It's going to be worse than the TADU and a little bit worse than the Type 96A. It's still very quick. It gets 12% camouflage across the board, making it second only to the Type 96A, and again the reason for that is they come from the same school of thought that the faster you move and the smaller your profile, the harder it will be for enemies to detect you. And so the real big difference between the two vehicles here is just the, simply that the Leclerc prototype is actually taller. That's it. View range is 430 meters, same as the Type 96, best of the class, but of course depending on what commanders you have and if you put any optics on it that can change it gets negative eight degrees of gun depression which is not the worst but not the best it gets a min spread of 0 0.11 which is okay again it's not going to be as accurate as a challenger but other than that it's the most accurate main battle tank represented with an aim time of only two seconds you can snap shots pretty reliably again it gets a turret traverse speed of 40 degrees which is second only to the T-80U. So this is a very quick firing, quick moving tank. Again, it's more like a medium tank in my opinion. And so it gets no defense. It's only got 2,800 hit points stock, although it can go up to 3,100 with the armor upgrades. I forget, I know there's a steel composite and then screens. I forget which one gives you the 3,100 hit points. Hull armors, 450, 145, 30. So pretty bad. It's actually better than the Abrams, but as we know, the Abrams is really angled and it's got a nice composite armor. So it bounces a lot more shots. And then same thing where you see the 277 in the front of the hole for the TADU, but you know that that lower plate's virtually invisible. And so the only reason I'm saying all this is that it looks like it has really great armor, second only to the Challenger. But in reality, its armor is not angled at all, which is what I was trying to show you. It's just completely flat, whereas on the T-80U, that's not the whole plate. If you remember, the whole plate slopes rounded straight under there, and these things just hang off of it. Which is why a lot of people will shoot these thinking it's a lower plate and it just bounces straight into the ground. Or with the Abrams, where... This is the lower plate they're talking about. That's only 200 millimeters thick. This one is quite thick here, and it's very easy to angle that down to just bounce. So you won't be bouncing anything in the Leclerc. I just want to make that clear. So take these armor values of the grain of salt. Turret 770, best in its class, but again, it's not angled. So it does have very thick cheeks, kind of like an Abrams but not angled at all just straight up so when you're looking straight at the Leclerc yeah these cheeks will bounce it every time they're 700 meters millimeters thick but as soon as you go just like this you're going to be penned by literally any tier 7 or tier 6 in the game main battle tank that is so take these things with a grain of salt it's going to look really good on paper as a really fast but heavily armored vehicle so kind of like the type 96a with armor you can't lose but just remember that it's not angled. Even the Type 96A is a little bit more angled than this. So those two, those 2,800 hit points don't go a long way. Uh, it gets 670 millimeters of penetration, which is quite high, although that is something that we've been seeing with the rest of the French line. 
If you remember any of my videos made on the AMX30 or AMX40, you know that the French have an incredibly good penetration for their tiers. So 670 stock penetration is not bad at all. But because of that, the shell damage is dropped to 500. Kind of the same thing with the Abrams because it has a reload time of 8 seconds. The idea is that with heavier penetrating rounds that can fire fast than most tanks, they knock the alpha damage down so that way it doesn't become overpowered. It has a damage per minute of 3700, which is actually second, again, only to the TADU at this tier. So it's quite an effective main battle tank if you're going to play it in an active sort of scouting role. It is also accurate if you want to do some mid-range sniping. Because of that aim time of only 2 seconds, because of the great penetration it gets, and the shell velocity of its Sabo rounds, sorry about that, it will be an effective mid-range sniper. So on paper, it's a very, very strong vehicle, and it also gets the brand new designated area special ability and so what that is is that for an 100 meter diameter i guess i was going to say radius but for a 100 meter circle uh you get to pick out enemy vehicles for your team for 25 seconds at a time and basically the yeah you can see it in the conditions down there the only caveat to that is you cannot use it while moving so you basically just sit still and spot. You can, in effect, designate almost an entire enemy team and give them the higher damage penalty and spot them for longer so they can't use cover. It's exactly what an AFE does. But unlike an AFE, you can't just put it up on a target and then leave. You have to sit there the whole time. And essentially the reason for that is that the idea is the radar in here, the new fire control systems, which were made to designate targets quite literally to pick out where they'll be firing from and to move the tank out of the way and quickly respond with the turret on the move is that you'll be using those sensors but not like the real world here in Armored Warfare you have to be at a standstill to equip them effectively. That's it. It's just another cool little way that Armored Warfare incorporated the very real state-of-the-art technology that set the Leclerc prototype and eventually the Leclerc line apart from almost every other Western MDT. I mean, you're looking at a very lightly armored, hard hitting, rapid response MBT. And like I said, it plays more like a tier eight or nine medium tank in a world of tanks. If anybody's played that game and knows a little bit about what those vehicles are like, this plays a lot like that. So I would strongly suggest either playing it exactly like the Type 96A or playing it like a medium. Pulling back when you have to, spotting when you can, being aggressive, just not too aggressive, and don't go after other MBTs. I would not brawl at all. I've played like one or two games with this so far, and it will lose a brawl. And the only good news is, well, that's not true. I take that back. It won't lose every brawl with an MBT. I did win a brawl with another Leclerc. Because it's so fast that just like with the Type 96, or if you use the same tactic with the TADU, you basically just spin around a target, you track them, and then spin around them. You'll be faster than its turret traversed, and you can just win that way. But that would be the only way. That's the only way I could think about this thing brawling. I would pull back, use it as a mid-range sniper, and a mid-range scout, and you'll have a great time. So I'm going to put this video up now again. Throw up a like if you enjoyed it, or let me know in the comment section below if you would have preferred to see gameplay immediately after this or not. But I will be uploading the gameplay video later today. I'll probably be doing one and one. Or since it's its own dedicated video, doing the actual, I only did three yesterday, so I'll probably do the full four. Two PvP, two PvE, and just go over some more things. Bring up some of the statistics that I mentioned here and just how they play in the game. And so if you want to get notified when that goes up, please subscribe to the channel, little bell icon to get notified. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.